All right, so in this video today, I want to talk about what you should get if you're thinking about getting into FPV as of today. This is toward the end of May of 2020, and I'm going to put out an update video on this every few months uh, because obviously new products keep coming out and my picks will change. But as of May of 2020, these are the three things that I would get if I were you and you're starting out in FPV. Now, of course, this here is a Tiny Hawk 2 race. It's going to be mostly for outside flying. I know that there's going to be a large percentage of you guys out there that watch my channel that are going to say, hey, we should start out with a whoop. And yes, I think that I think that there's a, there's a good argument for that. But, you know, now that we're coming into summer, uh, flying whoops outside is not really ideal. It's too windy. And this one is going to be better for handling that little bit of wind uh, than, say, like a you know, tiny whoop, for example. And also, this is going to um, help people that want to progress a little bit faster. Um, this is going to have more power. It's going to be a little bit more fun. And, um, you know, it, yeah, it's going to be a little bit harder to learn on than a whoop, and possibly you're going to crash a little more. But I think this is also going to be pretty durable for flying around at the park. So these three things are going to be the Tiny Hawk 2 Race, the Beta FPV Light Radio 2, and the Beta FPV VR01 goggles. And I've done reviews on all three of these already. I'll link all those things down in the description if you want uh, more in-depth uh, content on these particular products. But, you know, um, putting these all together could be a little bit tricky. So at the end of this video, I'm gonna actually walk you through the Betaflight configurator on how to get your uh, Tiny Hawk 2 race connected to your light radio to get it bound up and make sure that all the switches are working properly so you can go and fly it. Um, the Tiny Hawk 2 race uh, video transmitter is defaulted on race band 4 so you just have to change the goggle channel to race band 4 with these two buttons here. Uh, change the band until it's on race band and then change the channel until it's on channel 4 and they'll match what's in the um, Tiny Hawk 2 race and you'll get video in the goggle. Now People are going to ask, well, why the VR01 goggles and not, say, like the EV100Ds or, say, like the Emax uh, transporter goggles? And this is kind of in between. Um, the transporter goggles are good for Emax and uh, uh, have no problem recommending this, but this one has a DVR, and that's the main difference. So I know that a, lot of, a lot of people that are getting into FPV, they want to record their flights and be able to share them on Facebook, Instagram, etc. And with the transporter goggles, you're not going to be able to do that. With these goggles, you can record to the micro SD card and then pop them into your computer and share them on the internet. And that's the main reason why I recommend this one over the transporter goggles. And plus, uh, I recommend this one over the EV800Ds because the EV800Ds are going to be running like 80 ish dollars, 85. Sometimes you can get it for more or less. And that's a good goggle if you want to spend more money. I have no problem recommending that one as well. But this one is going to be coming at a lower price point, um, especially for those that are starting out that won't, don't want to spend a lot of money. This is uh, around $50, $55, and that's why I recommend this one. Now, why this transmitter? So I did talk about this in the video, uh, which is going to be linked down in the description, but basically this is the cheapest transmitter that I could recommend uh, for an entry-level product like the Tiny Arc Race 2. And the, well, there's going to be some people that have um say for example this guy here the tiny hawk 2 whoop here which comes in a ready to fly version that comes with the transporter goggles and uh the controller that's actually made it to this particular whoop and they've actually uh configured this uh with the rates and everything in this specifically for that controller and i don't recommend if you do happen to get the tiny hawk 2 race or tiny hawk 2 uh, rtf with the transporter goggles and that controller, don't just buy the Race 2 and use that controller because you're going to have a really bad experience. It's the, the, That controller ha has, doesn't have very good um, center stick feel, and so basically it's, this is going to be, fly very erratically. Um, you could possibly change the configuration on this to match that controller, but um, that's probably a lot more work than a beginner will need to figure out. So that's why I don't recommend doing that. So if you happen to have the Tiny Hawk 2 RTF and already have the transporter goggles and don't care about getting a DVR or recording your video, then all you need to do is just upgrade 
to the light radio, uh, light radio 2 and you already have the goggles and then get the Tiny Hawk Race 2 and you're good to go and just watch the end of the video on how to connect up these two guys so that you'll have um, a good experience. And, and again, the reason is this is the cheapest, basically cheapest radio with, with real gimbals. So this is like a budget radio. It's like, what, $40 or whatever. But they have actual hobby grade gimbals here. You can actually fly something much larger and have a decent experience with this particular radio. Um, whereas you can't do that with a lot of the RTFs out there. So this is what I recommend as of today, uh, May of 2020. These are the three products that I would get and you should have a pretty good experience. Obviously the first step, uh, in my opinion, I think a lot of people would agree is if you want to get an FPV, fly a simulator first, get this, get this radio first before you get the drone and the goggles. And then you can connect this up to your computer and buy a simulator like Velocidrone, uh, something like that. Um, they're all pretty much about the same. Just get which, wh whichever one um, uh, people feel is uh, the most uh, popular out there. Just get that one. They're all about 20 bucks or something like that. Connect this up to your computer. You can use this as a simulator and learn to fly in the simulator first because you're going to crash a lot. And then go ahead and, and pick up the Race 2 and the goggles and you should have a pretty good experience with this setup here. This is where I recommend right now. Um, I think in a few months, if something new comes along, then I'll make a new video. But th this is a really, really common question I get from a lot of people. Hey, you know, we're watching videos and I want to know how to get started. What should I buy? This is what I would recommend you buy. Get this one first, practice in a simulator, and then go and pick up the goggles and the Tiny Race 2 and go and fly out in the park. I think you'll have a pretty decent first time experience. And again, watch the end of the video for the uh, configuration setup so you can get the uh, transmitter bound to the Tiny Hawk Race 2. Anyway guys, I hope you found this video helpful. If you, like, if you did, give it a thumbs up and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Okay, so uh, to get your Tiny Hawk 2 Race connected to your uh, Light 2 transmitter, first you want to plug in the drone USB into your computer using a micro USB cable. And this is assuming you've already installed uh, the Betaflight configurator and you're not having any sort of uh, USB port problems. If you are having some problems and don't get a COM port here in your screen like I do here, COM3 is what the Tiny Hawk 2 race is set to, then I have another video down in the description that can possibly help you fix your computer problems. That's more a USB driver problem and not in the scope of this video. So check out that video down in the description if you're having any problems. Uh, for, so if you're assuming you've got the configurator already installed and you have a COM port and it's working, go ahead and plug it in to your computer and go ahead and connect to it. And you should get this. And the first thing you want to do is bind this up to your transmitter. So we'll go down to the CLI and you're going to down in the CLI and in this box down here, you're going to type in bind underscore RX. And then I'll put the uh, receiver that's built into the board into bind mode. Go ahead and turn on your transmitter. You want to make sure it has three red flashing lights. That means it's in D8 mode, otherwise you'll have to switch it. And if assuming it's in D8 mode, then you want to go ahead and once it's powered up, just press the bind button in the back. And then you'll get a flashing red light. And uh, after it stops flashing, it should be bound. Once that stops flashing, you want to type in save in the command prompt, hit enter, and then that will reboot the flight controller. And it'll disconnect you, and then you want to go ahead and reconnect. And then now we'll go into the receiver tab here, and then we can check to see if the channels are moving correctly. And we can see here that they are not. This radio is an AETR radio. Uh, the default channel map that comes from the factory is TAER. So this isn't going to work. You're not going to be able to fly it when it's mapped like this. So you just have to change the channel map here from TAER to default, which changes it to AETR. And hit save. Let's do that. You can check that your channels are working correctly. Rolls should be working in the right way. So when you Move the roll stick to the right, the value should increase. Move it to the left, the value should decrease. Pitch, if you uh, pitch down, or move the pitch stick down, the value should decrease. Move the pitch stick up, the value should increase. For yaw, uh, they should increase if you're moving the stick to the right. 
and the left if you're moving to the left, remove the value should go down. Throttle, of course, uh, up the top position and then down zero is normal. Um, and then aux one is the, um, the, the switch that's furthest away, that's furthest down, it's the two position switch, that's aux one on the left. And then on the uh, left at the top is the three position switch, that's aux two. And that's going to correspond with your modes, and I believe uh, there shouldn't be anything to change here. So, aux one is going to do arming. So you can see that here under the modes tab, when you flip the modes or the aux one switch, it should arm the copter. That's the two. That's the two position switch that's on the left side of the transmitter, and then uh, should be defaulted into angle mode. Yeah. So, in, in the aux two switch, the, the three position switch that's on the left, that's uh, towards the top. Uh, it will be in angle mode and, and the, the default position, that's, that's basically the switch away from you. And the switch in the middle position will be horizon mode. And then in the top position, that's going to be acro mode. That's basically, uh, that's the default mode. So those are so basically all the way away is angle, middle is horizon, and all the way f uh, to the top is going to be acro mode. And those are the two main switches that you're going to be worried about. I don't think there's, there's the beeper mode, which is aux 3. That's the top switch on the right side. So if you want to turn the beeper on, that's the motor beeper. Move the switch all the way up. And is there one more down here? This flip over crash, that's aux four. So that's going to be the bottom switch um, on the right side of the transmitter. That's aux four if you want to enable turtle mode. Um, I think that's it for the modes. Now for the uh, video transmitter, I believe it's uh, going to default to race band four. So all you gotta do on the goggle is uh, change the channel uh, to four and the band to race band, and then you should be able to tune in to whatever channel you want. Or if you have a favorite channel, you can just pick from here what you want here in the configurator. If you say if you're on Fat Shark, you can just select Fat Shark and then select whatever channel you you want to use. Basically, Fat Shark one. Then um, you can switch it over here and then just tune into that channel on the goggle, and you'll see video. And that's it. Uh, basically, just charge up your batteries, make sure your props are on properly, um, and then obviously plug it in, plug in your batteries, and then just you can just fly by uh, switching the arm switch, as I mentioned earlier, aux one, and you can go and fly. So that's pretty much it for the setup. It's going to be pretty simple for this particular model.